you're watching Headbangers Lifestyle. I'm at uh, Alcatraz Festival and uh, I'm here with uh, Michael Ankerfeld. He's from Opeth. Welcome. Thank you. Yeah, you're playing tonight, right? I think so, yeah. You think so? Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> it's quite late that you're playing, right? Too late. Too late? That's my bedtime. Oh, hmm. <laughs> well, you can sing some lullabies <laughs> for the people. Yeah, I don't think I have to. Be drunk. <laughs> Don't be drunk, yeah. But um, there's a new album on the way. Mm -hmm. For you, it's already a fact. You know yeah. what it's all about. Uh, but your fans, maybe not. So maybe you can announce the title again. Yeah, it's called In Calda Veneno, mm -hmm. which is Latin for The Poison is in the Tail. Okay, how, how did you come up with that one? Internet. Ah, internet. Yeah. You can find anything there. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I heard it's. Uh, uh, Two albums, the main English version and the That's series right. the version. Um, okay, well, there's a big challenge. Uh, big question: Why did you do it? Um, I mean, it was uh, meant to be just the Swedish version ah. first, but uh, I got a bit insecure, I guess, because I had uh, uh, problems with the music that was sung in uh, not English uh, singing mm -hmm. lyrics uh, when I was growing up. Uh, and then now it's not a problem for me anymore. I got into the whole uh, Italian prog scene and whatever. But mo most of those bands sing in, in their native tongue. Uh, but I figured there might be people who have problems with that. So at the last minute, I decided I'll do an English version mm -hmm. as well. But, but that, uh, the Swedish version is the main one. That's the main one. Yeah. Okay. But it's double work for you, double work for. Uh, yeah. Mixing, producing, and uh, it wasn't, mastering, maybe. It wasn't like that. We we kept the same settings for the for the English version. So the only thing I had to do, which I mean, it was a lot of work, but I had to write, translate the lyrics from Swedish yeah. to English, and then record vocals all over again. So that was a, a bit of a daunting task. Yeah. But came out well, I think. Yeah. It was good. Uh, did you feel you could uh, put in uh, the same emotion in in the English version as in your native language? I mean, it is secondary. Yeah. The English version is secondary. You know, it's you can't escape the fact that it's a it's a copy of the Swedish yeah. version. Um, and that the Swedish version was done. I was in my studio, just really relaxed, uh, and I didn't have a I didn't have to think of time issues or money issues. While I was doing the English version, of course, we had booked a studio when I was in there and mm -hmm. I needed to be done in time. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's a bit more, I wouldn't say it's a lesser version, but it is a copy. It's a copy. And yeah. the first one, I mean, it's like painting a great yeah. painting. Yeah. I say great painting. Yeah. Uh, and then, well, I'm going to do that again exactly the same. And you will probably look what you did before and it would be a bit more contrived, mm -hmm. I guess. Yeah. But with, with that said, I think it depends on which version you pick up first. Yeah. If, you, if you pick up the English version first, that, that will be your version. Yeah. Uh, but I'm hoping that people will check out the Swedish version because I think that's the best one. Yeah. Is it something you would uh, do again? Now you have this experience? Don't know. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, why not? I mean, it's a different climate now for, yeah. for music. I mean, it's not so... Uh, Boxed in, you don't have to follow the rules as much as as you did in the early days. I mean, you wanted to fit in to a certain extent and to be. Uh, it cr sounds crass, but I wanted the records to sell yeah. and those kind of things. And now it's a, it's a different uh, climate, I guess. Yeah. I think I don't really care well, as much. But I, as long as the music is great, of course. But you're an established uh, artist, so maybe you can take more risks. People will buy your album anyway? Yeah, I mean, risks for me, it's a positive mm -hmm. word. I like taking risks, but I never see them as risks. It's just, it's just that it's just uh, what we felt like doing at yeah. the time being. And we don't cater to our career, maintaining the career by putting out records that we think will sell and that everybody will like. We, we put out records that is like, okay, this is what we want to do now. And, here it is. Yeah. If you like it, that's great. If not, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that type of thing. Yeah. And uh, about the music, uh, what can fans expect from this album? It's. Uh, I'm happy. I'm really happy with it. But uh, my taste is very eclectic. I think. 
I listen to so many different types of genres of music. Uh, I don't like people ask, like, what's your guilty pleasure? I, I don't have any yeah. guilty pleasures. I can listen to whatever. Yeah. Uh, and that finds its way into our own, own music. So I think it will maybe be a bit difficult and a bit of a test to people who are just listening to metal music, maybe. Uh, but there are metal moments in there. And I think like to think we wouldn't have been able to write these types of song if, songs if we didn't have that background, so to speak. Uh, but there's a lot of stuff going on. It's uh, quite... Uh, Some new journey? Yeah. I mean, it's really hard for me to say yeah. because I wrote it. Yeah. But it's uh, yeah, it's uh, epic, and big, and overblown, and pompous and mm -hmm. stuff that I like. Yeah. And how would you uh, define Opeth like now, today, where they are standing? Um, free form, mm -hmm. kind of yeah. going with the, the flow and not the the flow of the pub public opinion. Just our own like, little street. Yeah. <laughs> a new album also means uh, touring. Uh, uh, I saw there's already quite some shows scheduled. Um, how do you prepare for a tour these days? Uh, agony. Sitting at home, not wanting to go. Uh, and then we need to do some rehearsals. Um, but generally, I, I, it's, it's a terrible thing for me to be be facing a tour. I have a girlfriend and two daughters back home, two cats, that I don't want to leave, you know. Yeah. Uh, but this is what I do. I love to play with the guys, be on stage. Uh, but you're in a fragile uh, state of mind, or I am at least, yeah. when you're on tour. You have like a little family away from home, which is the guys in the band. But the moment someone else steps in, that circle is broken. And you're insecure and you're you want to go home, basically. So, the, you know, my best moments on tour is when we're on stage playing and we're in, in the dressing room afterwards talking about the show. Then the rest I could definitely live with, live without. Yeah. How do you deal then? Because you go on tour, and how do how do you make you feel uh, yourself more comfortable in the situation? Well, back back in the day, you you got sedated by vodka. Drinking and listening to music, and that stuff, and we still do that. You know, that's fun, but it gets very samey after how many years we've been together. So I try to uh, walk out. You know, wh wh whatever town we're in, I wake up, check where's, where's the record shops. It's 20 kilo kilometers that way. Yeah. Can I walk that distance? Maybe, <laughs> maybe not. <laughs> Uh, and then find the record shops and go for a coffee and you know, walk around town and do that and find some records. Mm -hmm. uh, that's my motivation apart from the show itself. Yeah. What's the latest uh, record you bought then? Uh, a Kinks record. The Kinks. The Lola. Yes. That one. Uh, which so I had. Yeah, it's <laughs> I had it back in the day, but then I decided I don't like the Kinks. So I sold my entire Kinks collection. Ah. And then uh, when I got together with my girlfriend, she's a big the Kinks fan, and she's like, Do you have any Kinks records? I have uh, this, these. I sold them. <laughs> so I had to buy them again. Yeah. Now I have all. Of them. Now you have it all. Yeah. yeah. And do you like to score for new bands as well? Love it. What's your latest? Uh, Not new band, new old band. Yeah, or to really recommend a, a band that you discovered, like our new young talent. Well, since you asked, this yeah. is a great band. The name again? Does it say Commerce on the back? Yeah, Commerce. I, I forgot. Commerce. It looks like a death metal logo, but it's a, it's a, uh, um, a folk band, you could say. Mm -hmm. That was part of the David Bowie scene. He, uh -huh. he was kind of their chaperone, actually. Oh. Um, they hung out with him when he was a mime artist, you know, that stuff. Uh, great. The lyrics are like death metal lyrics. Okay. But the music is uh, psychedelic folk. Mm -hmm. Very dark and crazy. Have yeah. you heard of the band Family? No. no. It's like Family were a bit, bit more well known, but it's kind of that craziness uh -huh. in the voice. Um, a great, great band. Something to, uh, to check out. Yeah. Uh, last one, is there anything you uh, 
really want to accomplish in the near future with the band or later on as an artist? Is there anything on your bucket list, creative? Kind of? That is a valid and a, I think good question, but I don't have bucket lists. Um, I mean, every record is like, wow, that's insane that we yeah. managed to do a record. Every tour is like, wow, every show. You walk off like, wow, we, we, we're alive. Yeah. We made it. Yeah. Uh, so that, that, that immediate future is to make it through is my, on my bucket list. Yeah. But I don't have dreams of doing a triple album with an orchestra or no. you know, stuff. with another artist. No, but... no, not okay. really. I'm too uh, t tunnel visioning. Yeah. So I, I have idols. Yeah. There are people here today, like Mick Box from Uriah Heep, but like, I would not dare to say hi to him, yeah. him, let alone ask him, like, should we, we should write together. And if we would, if I would say, my, my biggest idol is Richard Blackmore and Joan Mitchell. Those two. Mm -hmm. If I could just sit with them, the last thing on my mind was like, let's write a song, Joni. <laughs> That's not gonna happen. No. <laughs> you know, they're yeah. up there. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, I just idolize these people too much. And, um, when I idolize someone, it's I get uh, yeah, not, not a creative person. I can write stuff on my own, but together with idols, that wouldn't work. No, no. <laughs> okay, well, thank you very much. Cheers. Thank you guys for watching Headbangers Lifestyle. And please like this video and uh, subscribe to our channel. And we'll see you the next time.